If you've never heard of Obsidian, this is for you. If you've heard of Obsidian, but you haven't used it yet, this is for you. If you have heard of Obsidian, used it a little bit, but haven't used it a lot, this is also for you. This actually comes from a viewer question who asked, hey, how do you use Obsidian? And I title every single one of my Obsidian videos, how to use Obsidian. But he was like, no, no, no. I don't mean how do you get it to do what you want it to do? How do you get yourself to start using Obsidian. And considering what time of year this is, I figured now was as good a time as any to talk about how you can start the using Obsidian habit or any other habit, really. So if you are looking to start a new language or start using Obsidian, this video is for you. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome. My name is Jonathan Pritchard from ICanReadMinds.com and I love making videos to help you figure out how to be a more successful creator, business owner, artist, entrepreneur, and anything else you could possibly think of. And I love doing that by sharing insights about human psychology, motivational decision making, and all the kind of brainy stuff of what it means to be alive. That's why my website is ICanReadMinds.com. Now, we are going to be talking about how to pick up the using Obsidian habit. And we're going to be doing that by talking about four details that got me into using Obsidian. The last one is kind of the nuclear option, and it's also the most successful. So stick around until the end to figure out what that is. But first, let's talk about why why to even start using Obsidian. That's number one. What's your why you would even think about using it in the first place? My why was uh, two whys, really. First one was I got tired of looking for stuff that I knew I had around here somewhere. Was it in Google Docs? Did I put it in Google Keep? Did I have it in my phone notes? Did I email that to myself? Was it in any number of other places? And I realized that I was spending so much time looking for information than I was actually using the information when I found it. And also, I knew that I was forgetting a lot of stuff that I wanted to remember. See, part of my profession is as a performer and a speaker, and that comes from my background as a mentalist, which is kind of a flavor of magician that has specialized in mind-reading tricks. And I make entire shows, 70-minute interactive theater shows for companies and stuff. And I knew that there were incredible demonstrations that I used to do that would be perfect for this situation, but I couldn't even remember what it was called. And I just go, ah, they, I know there's something. And I wound up just doing the same things over and over and over again. And it kind of got stale. So I realized I'm forgetting way too much. So I need one place to put everything. And Obsidian became that. The second why is I started seeing very successful people talking about this personal knowledge database thing. And they were a lot smarter than I am. So I figured, you know what? I should probably pay attention to what they're talking about and figure this stuff out. Now, Notion is really popular for this and Evernote. And there's a whole world of Obsidian. And that's the rabbit hole that I went down. But basically, to me, it was incredibly valuable to have a single place where I put every single thought and detail I could possibly imagine and have it as a single resource. And that way, I always know where to look. I always know where it is. And the, the cool parts of Obsidian, I discovered later. But that's why I got into Obsidian. So for yourself, think about why you would even want something like that in your life. Maybe you're frustrated like I was about losing track of stuff. Maybe you are a content creator, you're a writer, you're an artist, and you want to keep track of your commissions and client relationships. There's a bazillion reasons why you would want to use Obsidian. And 
basically, if you're a creator of any sort, and I include business owners as creators because you're creating a product, a good, a service that makes the world a better place. So you're creating good in the world. So basically, if you are a creator, you've got to keep track of a lot of stuff. And Obsidian is perfect for that. So that's tip number one, discover your why and then move on from there. The second detail is set the bar for success so low that you can't even trip over it. Bury that bar if you need to. So basically, to me, it is making the decision that is very, very, very small that you can follow through on. So for example, you could say, anytime I'm on the phone or I'm on a client call and I'm going to take notes, I'll take those notes in Obsidian. If I'm going to randomly jot something down in Notepad or text edit, a very simple, basic text editor, um, instead of doing it in any of those, I'll put it in Obsidian. Instead of using Google Keep, I'll put it in Obsidian. Whatever one element that is for you, make that the one thing that you use Obsidian for. So that is kind of the, the next step is to just make it your go-to thing for just one thing. Don't try to bring over your entire life and recreate everything from the ground up and, and get lost in the weeds that way. It'll just become too overwhelming. It'll be frustrating. It won't work the way that you think it should. And then you'll say, ah, this is awful. I'm going somewhere else. But instead, if you make it your go-to, I'm just going to write something down. I'm just going to type it and just do that with it. Eventually, you'll get used to doing that. And then you'll say, oh, I wish I could do this other thing. And then you'll slowly start to pull in other areas of your life until it becomes your all-encompassing life management system like it is for me and a lot of folks that love Obsidian. So start small, and then when you hit the ceiling, then learn a little bit more, and it'll be more and more flexible, and it'll fit you perfectly every step of the way instead of trying to build it all out from the beginning. The third detail is to commit to using it at least once a day every day. And that is a little bit bigger of an ask, but if you can stick with a daily habit long enough, it just becomes the thing that you do. Now, there are kind of two ways that you can help yourself out on this front. And Obsidian has kind of a built-in daily journal philosophy to it. Now, you could use it just fine as your notepad, as your just jot stuff down kind of thing, but baked into it, it are a lot of ideas about using it as a daily journal that links out to other areas and other notes and and it becomes this incredible web work of notes and ideas. But at the heart of it is, if I'm just going to jot something down, put it into your daily note so that you know that all those are going to be in your daily notes. And then you'll have them organized by time, which is a lot cooler than you might think at first blush. And um, I would strongly suggest that you watch kind of my more popular video, which I will link up here. That's like, how, how did I not know? It took me too long to know. Uh, that video is all about daily notes and how it fits into the philosophy of, of Obsidian and how a lot of plugins use it. Uh, the second, the second way to commit to doing this every day is to create a daily habit tracker that you check in every single day. And every day that you see that checkbox, uh, you really don't want to see that red X that you didn't use it. And that's kind of an idea from uh, Jerry Seinfeld, who was saying you just you do it every day and you mark it off and you don't want any zero days. And after you've got a month or two of using it every day, 
and you think, oh, I won't use it today. And you look at the, the streak you've gotten and you go, oh, okay, yeah, let me, let me go back in there and fill this out. So that would be the second way that you can help yourself use it every day long enough. Um, one, one note of caution is that creating that daily tracker, which, uh, I've done a whole video about that as well. I'll link that at the end of this video. Um, it is wild and crazy. It, it takes a lot. So if you're used to coding, if this is something you are just all in on and you want to, uh, bite this off, then go ahead and watch that video that I'll link up at the end of this one. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend it if you've never tried Obsidian ever before, before watching this, um, save that to later, but know that you've got it in your pocket whenever you would like to, to try it out. And now that brings us to the fourth and final detail, the nuclear option. And this is based on fundamental human psychology. Unfortunately, we are loss aversion creatures, which means that we would rather keep what we have than gain something we don't have. Another way of putting that is losing something we have is more painful than gaining something is happy. And to put that in dollar amounts, basically, if you lose $1, it's the same as making four or $5. So losing something is deeply disturbing to us human beings. And the potential gain is some imaginary thing, but losing what we already have is very real. So we are, we as people are more motivated by keeping what we've got than getting what we want. So let's use that as leverage to change our behavior. To do that, all you have to do is create an agreement with a friend or somebody that you trust who's going to be your accountability partner, and you make a commitment that if I don't follow through on this, if I don't use this once a day, every day for the next month, say that's, that's your commitment. And you tell your friend, if I don't use this once a day, every day for the next month, then I'm going to give a hundred dollars to a cause that I am morally opposed to. Think of the worst organization on planet earth that to you shouldn't even exist and then commit to giving them your money if you don't do this thing. Now, tell me that that wouldn't motivate you. I'm telling you right now that I don't even need you to tell me that because I know it will. And genuinely making that agreement and putting money down earmarked for that awful cause is the single most effective way of doing, uh, of getting yourself to do this new habit. So that's the trick that is incredibly effective. I don't care what it is that you want to start doing, learn a new language, practice a, a musical instrument, doesn't matter what the habit is. That's why I'm saying all these steps applied no matter what habit you would like to, to roll into your life. And this is the nuclear option. And now you kind of see why I call it the nuclear option. It is so extreme that uh, you can't help but do what it is that you've decided to do. So if you've made it this far, uh, hit the like button. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, then I highly suggest that you subscribe to the channel. But if you aren't ready for that kind of commitment, hit the like button or leave a comment on how you're going to, to try out Obsidian, what your goals are and, and what your why is. I would love to hear what that is. So hit me up in the comments below. I, I'm looking forward to seeing those. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Jonathan Pritchard from ICanReadMinds.com. And I always like to say, if you can change your mind, you can change your life. And now stick around for the link to that video that will help you make sense out of daily notes.